Selamat pagi guys! We are kind of getting everything ready just to get the boat back to the, the way we want to live in it. Um, so we just got back from the market, just got some veggies, fruit, um, we've just turned one side of the fridge on here. And uh, we have a little bit of, it's a little bit of mould inside of the pantry. All the sauce lids, there was like a little bit of mould growing. So I'm pulling everything out and wiping it down so there's no more mould that can grow, just with vinegar and eucalyptus oil. Um, so this is the state of the kitchen at the moment. jerry cans. Lauren did a really good job of organising the boat. I put about 40-50 litres of diesel in the boat. Ran all the halyards and lazy jacks and now we're just here fixing up the sails so we can put them on. Today I'm having a look at our autopilot because it's a very important um, factor of the boat so um, I figured I'll take a look and make sure she's all running all, all right and, and free. This is a system we have on our boat. It goes back to its computer module and then um, steers the boat for us. So uh, it's an old, oldest type of linear drive, but it's, um, it's still in good condition. There are a few serviceable parts in here that I want to take a look at and make sure are good before we set sail for this next leg of the journey. So I've taken this electric motor apart before and I've um, cleaned out the brushes. Everything seems to be good, I've just got to take it apart a bit further. There should be planetary gears and a belt in this side, I believe. That's what I'm hoping to find. I know it's not, hasn't got any oil or grease in that side, so we'll take that apart and have a look. The older models have plastic gears, that's what usually fails on these. Um, I'm not sure what year this was built, so it might have the brass gears and might have the plastic ones. I sprayed some grease on the planetary gears and reassembled for testing. This is a very simple system. The electric motor turns the planetary gear set, turning the thread inside the cylinder, forcing the rod to move in and out to steer the boat. So many jobs to do um, because this thing's just been sitting here for so long. Things just kind of seize up you know like it's a salt salty marine environment so everything sort of just needs a bit of a, a push to try and get going again so yesterday i started both engines cleaned the water intake so i made sure there was water popping through the engines so i left the solar panels on while we we're away i probably should have only left one panel on so that there was enough power being put back into the batteries just in case the bilge had to turn on and pump water out in, in an emergency so i left the solar panels on for that reason and um, got back and the batteries are they were dry well not dry but they were they were very low um because we have lead acid batteries, we have to top up our batteries with um, demineralized water. So yesterday's mission was to go and get some demineralized water, which we found pretty easily. Um, there was just a little little um, motorbike mechanic that, that had like a full box of demin water. So <clears throat> once we'd gotten that, it was, you know, come back to the boat, fill up the batteries, top up the batteries, and then I let the solar panels charge the batteries for the rest of the day because I thought oh no we're gonna have to buy new batteries but turns out they're still still good everyone in the marina came back to their boats after leaving their boats for the wet season just like we did and they had the same issues so I don't feel alone in that because two other boats had to replace their batteries but ours are still good so we'll see how that goes before we left usually at this time it would be stingy hot and you couldn't you couldn't stay on the boat but Right now it's pretty good, so I can't wait for that coolish, not that humid, humid 
you know, 30 something degrees. That's that's what we would have experienced if we stayed here on the boat instead of going to Japan. So I'm looking forward to clear skies and nice sailing this season. I just can't wait. It's gonna be amazing sailing up to Thailand. But for now, we've got a lot of cleaning to do and a lot of prep work to get to that point. So. I'll show you what the boat's like at the moment. Yesterday it was even worse. I had tools everywhere trying to um, fix all those little problems that had happened while we were away. This is our port side cabin at the moment. Look at that. So yeah, that's got all our sails, our bags from traveling and bedding and then cockpit cushions. So all that stuff has to, has to be taken out of there and, and um, tidied up. I cleaned the props yesterday because we are going to go alongside on the jetty there and as I was cleaning the prop I tried to turn it to clean the next blade because I didn't want to be too deep in the water and the prop would not move and I'm like holy shit what is going on here. So I cleaned as much um, growth off as I could, tried to turn it and pulled it as hard as I could and it must be like marine growth or like lime build up or something on the shaft because we only just replaced the cutlass bearings last year so what I'm going to do is unbolt it from the coupling so from the transmission the shaft and then I'm just going to push leave the coupling on there and then push it out so that it exposes enough of the shaft because the cutlass bearing is right there so expose enough of the shaft just to inspect it and maybe give it a sand up and give it a clean to make it so it um, wants to run free. I hope that's all it is and it's not a misalignment because I don't want to have to adjust that engine and up and down and side to side. So there, down there, I'm going to unbolt that coupling there and then um, push it out that two or three inches or so and then go in the water. Rough up the shell, not rough it up, but smooth the shaft over so and to inspect to see if there's any growth or like lime build up, lime scale build up or something, whatever whatever does build up on them. Um, because it wasn't doing that before we left, and that's why it tells me there's like some growth on the shaft or in the bearing itself. back in the engine room we're taking off soon and had a problem with the, this um, port side engine for a while on startup this blows heaps of white smoke white and black smoke that is a sign of we have to give the injectors a clean up um, if we we're in Australia I'd send them into a shop to be bench tested and crack tested but we're not in Australia so it's all gonna be done by me here I'm just gonna clean them up show you what's going on with this one this is the number one injector Right where the diesel comes out, that spray pattern's supposed to be even. It's supposed to be nice and perfect as it comes out of that injector so it can atomize and, and be burnt. But right now, I think there's just a bit too much carbon build up, if you can see that. I pull them apart, um, clean that nozzle with like a toothpick or maybe like a swab of some sort just to clean all that carbon off and put them back in and hopefully then just starts without blowing, blowing so much white and black smoke. Obviously white smoke is um, unburnt diesel um, and black smoke is also unburnt diesel so blue would have been a concern if it was blue that would have been we're burning oil somewhere but it's white and I'm pretty sure this is our culprit so. I've had this dodgy dodgy dipstick for our transmission for a while now just plastic broke apart inside the actual housing this is um, the one from the other side, this is what it's meant to look like. And I've dodged up my own, used that same steel part, and then found a little black plug that I had in the toolbox. So I've still got a breather on top. I've glued that breather on top. Not a bad little fix, eh, hey, Loz? Dodgy deal at it again with a big pimple on his lip. Look at that, it's huge. Hello, Blue Moonies. Hello, Hello Blue guys. Moonies. Hello. We thought it was about time to check in with you guys um, in real time. So the episode that you watched today was when we were back in Lombok, and now we are in Kumai. 
in so the Kumai River. Yeah, and in, in Kumai River, um, which is uh, on the southern end of Borneo. Uh, the locals call Borneo, so the local Indonesians call Borneo Kalimantan. And we're going on a orangutan tour here. So this anchorage is actually really interesting compared to the last few that we've been at. It's a really big um, export hub, exporting things like... Palm oil. That's the one of the biggest. One of the biggest, yep. Crude palm oil. Yep. Uh, Swiftlet's nests for bird's nest soup. So this whole, the whole skyline is of the, of the town is just bird's nest soup buildings and you can hear them all night, all day. It's a very busy port. And also rubber, I believe. Laba. Laba. You would have noticed in the start of this video, I was fixing or servicing the autopilot. Um, and just as we came into the Kumai River, after so long, it decided to to give up on us. So mm. um, it's just the electric motor and we've got one on the way. So it was good timing, actually. We came into the river mm. and it decided to turn off. Um, I think it was uh, following seas, you know, we've been pushing that thing to its limits for the last few weeks. We really have. And after researching the part, we found out it's like the unit's 20 years old. So, so it's going really good. Credit forward. where credit's due, Autopilot. You did, you, you know, you did well. You had a long run. They're simple um, design and they're still in use. The same design, but they just stopped making that actual mm. mod model. Okay, so really important. A huge thank you to our patrons. Thanks yeah, to thanks. everyone who's yeah been following the journey so far and the people that have, you know, signed on to patreon and become a patron it's like so appreciated yeah and it's adding up and helping us it's helping us so much more camera gear um even just provisioning and stuff we yeah. notice we can use that that sort of money to do that it's awesome exactly. keep us going for a little bit longer and finally these shirts that have been in the pipeline are on their way so my parents are actually due here in two days time uh so they are bringing the blue moon shirts with them uh, the blue moon shirts were made in uh, Bali and they're actually made of it's either 40 or 60 percent recycled bottles which is pretty cool that's really cool yeah. you'll hear the noisy Kumai River in the background possibly right now um, so we'll be getting that, those out to our patrons really really soon yeah. um, which is so exciting I can't uh, yeah so it's really become cool. a patron and you'll get yourself a shirt um, Shush. The, Current patrons are getting shirts anyway. Um, yeah, so we'll be in contact with our current patrons just to get all the right details and send, be sending those out in the next few weeks. So the shirts are in stock. You would have seen in recent videos we've been wearing these Alida shoes. We really like them and um, we've got some exciting news actually. That we have paired with Alida Footwear to give one of our patrons a pair. So we're going to be running the campaign for about six weeks and to all existing and new patrons uh, we'll be drawing the name out of a hat in six, six weeks time. Weeks. So become a patron yeah. and if you already are a patron you're already in the, you're already in the, in the, draw. the draw. And we'll actually put names in a hat or uh, pull a name out, pull them out. and um, whoever whoever that is gets the pair of shoes. Yeah, so Alita will just send them directly from their warehouse so you'll get to choose the size and then obviously pr provide us the correct address and they'll get sent straight to you. We really like the shoes. They're yeah. lightweight, they can pack down and... Yeah. They're really cool shoes and it's cool that we are able to share them with you guys as well. So yeah, so worked out well. Look them up and see if you want to become a patron just for that and t-shirt, you know, there's something in it for you guys now. And yeah, we're finally able to give back which is a really cool feeling. So we've had the patrons, you know, supporting us thus far and now we're finally at the stage where we can get some things together to give back to you guys which is really exciting yeah. thanks again for everyone who's watching and thanks, yeah we appreciate it and it's awesome to be able to share what we do with yeah. you guys it's um it's an awesome lifestyle it's very stressful and we don't forget that <laughs> upcoming videos we are You're stressed about to see. out a lot um yeah. but you know it is worth it in the end. Mm. Generally speaking, the good outweighs the stressful times, but we have our fair share of stress. Like mm. Dylan said, you'll see that in the upcoming videos. Yeah. So yeah, it's just really cool we can share this with you and finally give some something back to you guys. And thanks for watching and have a great weekend. See you guys. Bye. If you're interested in where we might be in real time, you can follow us on Instagram and Facebook. This channel is funded by our beloved patrons. Did you know Sailing Blue Moon episodes are released exclusively to our patrons each and every Friday? If you want to know more about us and our story, or you'd like to pledge your support, check us out on Patreon. There's tons of exclusive patron-only content, blog posts, homemade skincare ideas, healthy recipe alternatives that we use, plus some Blue Moon shirts in the pipeline. In addition to the subscribe button, click the little bell to the right to be notified of new weekly episodes. 
Thanks for watching, Blue Moonies.